Hi, I'm Ian Cole, the Technical Director of the Indoor Air Quality Association, bringing you an IAQA tech tip on air sampling for mold. You have a few different options if you want to sample the air for mold, each with advantages and disadvantages. Both indoors and outdoors, you'll always find some viable mold spores in the air. If these viable spores land on the right growth conditions, they'll grow into a colony. One way of quantifying these viable spores is with viable air sampling. A known volume of air is pumped onto a petri dish containing nutrient media. Then, a laboratory incubates the sample. Those viable spores that like the nutrient media you selected will grow into a colony and be counted as a CFU, a colony forming unit. Typically, non viable spores outnumber viable spores in the air by a wide margin. Non viable spores don't grow on anything, including the nutrient media used for viable air sampling. To enumerate non viable spores, which by the way may still cause some health effects, we'll need a different method. Spore trap sampling pumps a known volume of air onto a greased glass slide. Viable spores, non-viable spores, hyphal fragments, pollen, and other particulate get deposited onto the slide, which gets sent to the laboratory. The laboratory then analyzes the sample with a microscope. Nothing gets incubated and grown, so both viable and non-viable spores get counted because they can't be differentiated with this method. Besides mold spores in the air, we can find small fragments of growth structures in the air and small fragments of spores in the air. So there are newer methods available that can measure things such as fungal DNA, enzymes, and cell wall components. To learn more about air sampling for mold, consider taking the IAQA University class titled Air Sampling for Mold. Visit the IAQA website for more information.